So now it's time for our second speaker. Uh, Patrick already talked a lot about him. It's uh, one of his personal friends, clo close personal friend as well, Tim Rodenbreuker. Um, he is a teacher at the moment. Uh, he teaches students about uh, generative design, how they can use it uh, in their work, but also uh, just how to get started with it. Just really uh, not all of the advanced stuff, even though if you want to, that's a possibility as well. And he's going to talk to us about um, programming posters. So. Um, Patrick already showed us a couple of things and as you can see there's a lot of stuff happening here on the slides in between and all of the, the Digital Wednesday um, uh, uh, promotion stuff. That's also generated by generative design and uh, Tim is going to tell us a little bit more about it. So please give us a round of applause for Tim as well. Uh, super nice to be here. Thank you so much for inviting. Um, I am extremely excited about that. Um, yeah, today I'm just going to talk about two things. First of all, I want to um, explain you the technique, uh, how I teach my students to code. It's a cr kind of a um, creativity technique. And I want to talk about this course programming course itself. So, oh, there seems to be a little problem with the sound, right? Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Alrighty. So, um, yeah, my name is Tim, and I'm basically, I'm a designer, I studied design in Münster in Germany, and um, I'm also a developer and web designer, so I have a small company, we make websites for, um, well, other companies, <laughs> um, and also web applications, which is quite exciting, I really love that topic of web applications, so these are some of the works we do commercially, um, well, some editorial stuff, some digital storytelling for brands and magazines, but, um, well, since, as Patrick already mentioned a few things, um, since five years I really focus pretty much on creative coding, which means generative design. And, uh, well, here's just a sneak peek of a few projects I did last year, so check that out. Sound? Sound? No sound? Okay. Yeah, these are some, uh, well, just a little overview of some systems. Not all of these projects have been realized. That means you see some, some mock-ups. But uh, I think for the moment that's okay. Some of them have been realized. For example, this one or this one. This is an installation in, uh, in, in uh, Münster. A lot of web stuff. So, and yeah, this, okay, there's a little piece of my music just added to this presentation. <laughs> I produce it myself, so... <laughs> okay, so why should designers care about coding? Why should they learn to code? So I asked my students last week, by the way, last week was the first day of uh, and I started this job at Hochschule Rhein-Waal in Kamp Lippert. And um, well, it's really, really difficult to find, a good, to find a good answer for that question because there are so many different um, perspectives. I would say that code is the most versatile and fascinating medium of all times. That's my opinion. Well, it is super versatile, maybe not the most versatile at all, but it is just fascinating, right? I just love it. I just dived into coding five years ago, uh, with processing and generative design. And uh, yeah, this is really exciting. And um, yeah, but. It just started out a few years before. In 2011, I was at this uh, well university in Münster, um, and I was a little bit bored of my courses. And, and I just loved to spend time in the library. It was it's a super inspiring uh, place. And I um, discovered this book. It's called Programmiertes Gestalt, which means programmed designing. It's from, I think, 1969. Herbert Wikapitzky was a real design nerd. Uh, making something like um, generative design, but in a very, very analog and, uh, well, mathematic way. And, uh, yeah, these are some of the things that I've just found in this book. I was quite, well, fascinated about that because I thought, it, well, that's really interesting how that looks. And uh, I wanted to learn that by myself, so, uh, yeah, some more works. Yeah, this is how the people just worked back then in 1969. We use computers, they had pens and papers, and they had to calculate all these uh, distances between two rectangles and stuff. It was real hard work. So today we have got much better tools. And I, th I thought, okay, I just want to remake some of these things. I want to use the today's talks, well, uh, today's tools, sorry, uh, just like Adobe Illustrator and stuff. 
And, um, but I felt like I need something like a rule set. I need something like a creative framework that forces me to stay in this, uh, well, stay in this creative space, in this visual space. So I said, okay, if I want to do things that look a bit similar to the things in this book, I restrict myself to, two, to three rules. Use only black and white, because the stuff <laughs> obviously was only black and white, because they were not able to print anything in color. Secondly, I just, uh, well, I said, okay, start always with a basic geometric shape, like a circle, triangle, rectangle, or line. And the third rule was, use Adobe Illustrator to draw vector graphics, right? So, uh, well, I just set up this little block and uh, I could not stop working on that project. It was really super amazing. I had this huge creative output. I had about 20 graphics a day and I just was getting out of my bed and saying, cool, today I can work on this nice website. Um, that's very fascinating. So here are just a few of these works. Um, well, this is just a composition of lines. In the, in the middle, they just meet and make some moiré patterns. Uh, well, this is also quite interesting, I think. It just looks like the moon getting light from the left. Something like that. The Fibonacci rule. Um, yeah, pretty much there's a little bit of math in it. Obviously, well, honestly, I've never been good in math, so this was really a kick in the ass of my math teacher. Some 3D stuff. And yeah, of course, typefaces. Who, are, who of you does not like typefaces? Is there anyone who doesn't like typeface? Okay, perfect. So, typography, experience. Well, this is a font made just out of uh, circular pieces of a circle, right? some more stuff. And this is my key learning. I learned that restrictions amplify creativity. Just simple as that, right? Just if you focus on one thing, that's, it really forces you to, to be creative. You can't do it different. So that was my key learning. So take the time to make some photos of this nice slide. I just can smile if you want. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's why I came up with the idea. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Sorry? It's gone. it's gone. Okay, sorry. So here it is again. <laughs> okay, so I thought I can push this a little bit further because I can use this kind of well, restrictions amplify creativity. I need something that really puts that rule inside a, something that people can keep, that people can, can um, use as a creativity technique or something. Mm. And that's why, I, or that's how I came up with the idea to develop the magic triangle. Well, the magic triangle, right? So big drum stroke. Um, yeah, the magic triangle is basically um, well the quintessence of this three rules technique that I use in this blog project. So again, here are the rules. I said use only black and white. Start with a basic geometric shape like a square, rectangle, line, or a triangle. And um, yeah, use Adobe Illustrator. So I thought, ah, it would be really nice to visualize that with, with something like a, yeah, like a creative space. And the creative space is restricted by walls and the ideas are inside here, right? This is where the ideas live. And they cannot jump over the walls because they're restricted. So if, if an idea goes to the direction of color, rule one says, no, you cannot use color. It's, it's, it's not possible, right? So, um, and I think this is a pretty, um, well, yeah, this just, yeah, I think you, you can keep this be much better than just when I say uh, that you should use three rules. Uh, well, in the case of the project, oops, wrong button. Ah, come on, keynote. All right, I'm back. So in case of this project, it just looks, looked like this. This is um, the project applied to this magic triangle. So we've got use only black and white. Uh, Produce vector graphics and always start with these nice shapes here. And inside there, there's the creative space. So, um, okay, that was back in 2011 and many years just, well, went, how to spell it in English? So, now it's 2018 and I was getting a call by a professor of the Hochschule Rheinwald, right? He asked me, can't you make a talk about generative design? I said, of course I can, I would love to do that. And I did it, and after he offered me to, um, well, start the job as an educator there. So that was really a big luck for me. I'm really happy about that. 
And I thought, how can I teach? Well, of course, I have to say that I am um, paid to <laughs> teach design students to code, design students to uh, learn generative design. So I thought, what is the right way to teach it, right? What is, what is a good way to bring this abstract way of, okay, let's wait for this emergency. Uh, perfect. Uh, what is the right way to, to, yeah, to teach young design students to code? And I came up with, with the idea uh, that I want to let them make something they already love, right? What do graphic design students love? Of course, posters, right? Look on Instagram, there are millions and hundreds of thousands of uh, young designers posting their posters on Instagram and, well, exchanging new ways of expression and stuff. But uh, what I wanted to, wanted to teach then, that was the next idea that came after this one, was I wanted to teach them to create a poster 2.0, because posters are today not only printed. Posters today are interactive, they are digital, they are maybe generative, they are super, this is a super versatile um, medium, and they also can have sound, right? You can have a mouse cursor on this poster, and they are maybe in public space, these are displays that people maybe can use with a Kinect camera, right? So I thought this is a pretty good idea because the poster is a very old medium and uh, I want to enhance it in this course and letting the students create some posters 2.0. And so I came up with the idea to, uh, of calling or yeah, of calling this course programming posters. And here are some of the preparations I've made, of course. Well, I thought these students should see what's possible when we, uh, well, code some posters. And this is a little video I've just made, just, I, th I think, 25 posters here with some music. So these are program, po program, program posters. Yeah, so, um, well, I'm quite close to the end of my talk. I just uh, give you a few more examples from the past. So people have already been programming posters um, many years before. Uh, this is some work of Josef Müller-Brockmann, a Swiss graphic designer. I really love his work. Um, he uh, used these very, very, uh, well, old techniques to create such great artworks. Um, yeah, some more stuff. So this is, by the way, yeah, this is the, the, the magic triangle for um, programming posters. And yeah, wish me luck that the course is going to be successful and all the students deliver a lot of stuff with good ideas. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, again, if there is anyone who has any questions for Tim, right? Hi. Hi. Um, what kind of um, coding language do you use? Um, I always use processing. Well, basically, I work as a web developer also, some feedback. Um, but mostly, I use processing, which is pretty cool. So all of you guys can uh, really use processing. It's super easy to learn, and you will have very quick success moments. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, over there in the back. Can you throw the mic to her? Yeah. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Where are you? Behind so there. right behind there. Hi. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Um, 
I understand uh, you're teaching students, and I just wonder how long does it take for one to learn something like that? You say it's easy, but as a designer, uh, we have we see things in a different way. Mm -hmm. So how long does it? I mean, how long did you take to learn? <laughs> hmm. Well, that's a good question. Basically, um, one example where Patrick and me we, we just made a we uh, workshop at uh, Fachhochschule Münster, Münster School of Design. And it was super fascinating how fast these people just started to play with code that they found on the internet and just wrote their own stuff. Um, as I already mentioned, last week I started my course at Hochschule Rheinwald and there was a girl from, from India, I think, and she used a function that I've never seen in my whole life and she made visuals. I was blown away, right? I was looking at that. Ten lines of code and it really looked awesome. So that's the cool thing about processing and you really can achieve pretty cool results in a very short time. So, um, yeah, it's really, just try it out. Check that out, it's, it's really not hard. There are super many, by the way, there are super many uh, tutorials online. Daniel Schiffman, for example, is a super cool uh, teacher who has a, um, well, YouTube channel and he explains everything in a very funny way. I would prefer Schiffman over a series at Netflix. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> are there any other questions? Okay. Yeah. In the front? Should I throw it? Whoops. Hmm. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for your talk. Sure. It's really interesting. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm a uh, product designer. And ah. uh, so my mind is just uh, processing and thinking how to apply this more. Like I see a lot of graphic things, but mm -hmm. to do it uh, more on physical objects, mm -hmm. um, programming, incorporation, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, do you have any ideas maybe or yeah. had already for like more product related? Uh, there are so many different uh, examples for that and uh, it's really exciting to, to well I have a di database, I have a kind of a secret website where I just store all the ideas and there are hundreds of, of people making product design with processing and generative approaches. So um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of stuff. If you like, give me a mail address. I send you a yeah. secret link to my website. Oh, and yeah. You can explore. You can, it's categorized. You can click on product design and you get all the product design results. So if you like, just yes, please. give me your mail address. Okay? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Anybody else? So I think that's it, what we have time for. But uh, Tim will also be walking around afterwards. So if you have any yeah. more questions you're afraid to ask maybe now, then you can come up to him later. So mm. thank you very much, Tim. Thank Round you. of applause.